Hey guys, Scott Ryan 7 again. This time a review of the 144 scale high grade Gundam The Origin Zaku 1 Denim and Slender Unit from Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin. For colors, we get the typical Zaku 1 colors a mixture of moss green and kind of bluish purple. Then we get two shades of gray, one darker one for the joints, like kind of the inner frame that these Origin units come with, and then a lighter one for the accessories and also for the hands. And as you can see here, the color difference and the joints are slightly darker. Then finally, we also get some black for the bottom of the feet, the thrusters, and also for the inside of the head where the mono eye goes. Talking about the mono eye, for stickers, we don't get a lot of them. We get two stickers for the mono eye. We get one regular one. And then on the very nice marking sticker sheet, we get a much more unique mono eye. And with the white in the middle, it kind of gives a more of uh, a staring vibe. Then the rest of the marking stickers are really nicely done. Very master gradish. The one thing I absolutely love about the Origin kits, like we have the Xeon symbols, we have the numbers for Denim and Slender's unit, and then we just have like the generic warning symbols that go on the mobile suits. Back to the regular stickers, we also get two very nice shiny pink ones for the scope of the giant anti-ship rifle and also for the scope of the bazooka. Then the final one that I didn't use uh, are these stripes, very bulldozer construction-esque uh, for Denim's shoulder unit, but I decided not to use them because, well, I didn't really like the idea of having these kinds of stripes on a combat unit. Moving on to the articulation, the head goes nicely up, bit down, side to side, like the chicken movement, backwards and forwards, rotates around, and once you rip it off, you can also move around the mono eye, thanks to a little peg over there. And your nails or a toothpick will do just fine for that. Put it back on there. Shoulders there on ball joints will go nicely backwards. Forwards all the way like that on the ball joint. Then we have an extra hinge or a little bit extra. And then for even more articulation, we also have the chest itself that's a bit articulated. So they go forwards really nicely go up once again on that ball joint and then we have an extra hinge to get them up all the way like that so those shoulders are very much articulated then on the shield here this can move out all the way on a double hinge which makes it so that the articulation isn't hindered at all which has been a problem with certain older Zakus in the past then the arms will rotate around, bend at two joints, which is always great. Hands are on ball joints, will wiggle around, turn around, and do everything a ball joint does. Then the waist goes forwards a bit, backwards a bit. And now one thing I have to say about the waist is that it does feel a bit flimsy. You know, it could use a bit of the old super glue trick. And also side to side very nicely. You can see that double joint do its magic there. And then, of course, we'll also rotate around because, of course, no hoses on the Zaku 1. It's almost as if it's an improved Zaku 2, which does have hoses on the outside. The legs go forwards nicely, backwards nicely. And then we have the very nice origin joint, which will allow the legs to, you know, kind of shift forwards and backwards for more action-y poses. And to visualize it a bit more, right here, as you can see, the peg will go forwards forwards and backwards. Now these joints, of course, for stability are molded together here, unlike some of the master grades which have them separate. One very cool thing, talking about separate and non-separate, the front skirts, they are actually molded separately, so you don't have to separate them anymore. Side skirts are on ball joints, will go outwards nicely. Put this one to the side for a second, all the way like that. So we've got some really good articulation for a Zaku. Then, like, rotate around, bend at two joints, not too bad. Then the feet go forwards. And one really cool thing is that they are kind of you know, locked, that we have a really cool mechanic going on. Once you push the feet forwards enough, this bends automatically because it's connected to uh, the joint right there. So that's a really cool mechanical thing. One unfortunate thing about it is that it does... Uh, limit the articulation a bit because the feet should be able to go forwards a lot more if it hadn't been for that part but you know you win some you lose some 
So the crazy Zaku joint is unfortunately sacrificed a little bit for the sake of coolness. Oh, and one piece of articulation I almost forgot about, the thrusters, because, well, despite being on ball joints, they don't really do a lot of moving around. This is literally as far as they will go. In the end, I'd say the articulation on this thing is about as good as the detailing on this thing. Absolutely phenomenal, and about as good as you can get for a Zaku in one more horn for the fourth scale. So let's quickly move on to the equally awesome accessories. Starting off with the typical Zaku machine gun, we get a movable handle, a movable scope, and also a removable ammo clip. One really cool thing about this also is we of course have pegs on both sides. The sad thing about it is that, well, we only get one trigger finger hand, the right one. And on top of that, it's also on that awkward bended angled joint. So it holds all of the weapons in kind of an awkward position. I mean, this kind of angled holding hand is really good for a few select weapons, but not quite as good for all the rest, such as the Zaku machine gun, the Zaku bazooka, but then on the giant, well, on the anti-ship rifle, it's kind of good. And so yeah, unfortunately, we don't get a second straight one, like for example, with it with the Jim Custom. That was really nice. So it's also kind of awkward to get it to hold the machine gun with both hands, because of course that angled ball joint is kind of fighting against you. But then, for example, with a position like this, it looks pretty damn good. So it's just unfortunate that we cannot have the best of both worlds. Then a final thing for the Zaku machine gun, like I said, the clip is removable and we also get a second one, which can be stored on either the backpack or on the side skirts. Now it is on the loose side, so be a bit careful with it. Then, as I've shown before, we're getting the Zaku bazooka. The handle goes very nicely forwards, bit backwards, the handle moves and the scope moves. And just as with the Zaku machine gun, we have a removable ammo clip. And as you can probably already tell, we also get two spare clips. Now these are all the same, so all three of them have some, you know, kind of awkward pegs on them, which do still stand out once you put it in the bazooka itself. The good news here is, of course, lose one of them, you can still use one of the other ones. And the same goes for the clips on the Zaku machine gun. The second clip you're getting is the same as the original one. So lose one, still got the other one. Another weapon that looks absolutely gorgeous on this thing. And then the final range weapon that we're getting is the giant anti-ship gun. No movable parts on this thing, but we do get an extra holding hand for the left hand in order to hold up this beast. And now it's almost ready to go wreak some serious havoc. But it still needs a few more things. And the first of those things is, of course, a heat hawk. And we don't just get one heat hawk, we get two of them. We have one deactivated heat hawk with a peg on it, which will slot into either of the side skirts and onto the back skirt with the same slots as the ammo clip for the Zaku machine gun. And then we have an active one, the difference being we have no uh, protruding peg and also we have an active blade which uh, kind of makes me wonder if this is supposed to be the same technology as the regular Heat Hawk because, you know, the Heat Hawk technically should just have the edge being super heated rather than uh, generating something like a beam weapon would. So uh, maybe it's the same kind of concept they, you know, they're they kind of using on the goof or somehow the heat is Forming some kind of solid thing, I don't know, but you know, it's cool that we're getting two Heat Hawks, one with a peg and one without a peg. And probably the best thing about the Heat Hawk is that it can actually be held in the hand without it falling through. Always the big problem with the Heat Hawks, especially in the past. And then the final thing it needs to go wreak absolute havoc is, of course, a spare weapon. Now, all, unfortunately, we can only do this with the bazooka. You get a clip that goes on there, and then bazooka, you fold out that, and then simply peg it in there. 
And that is a really cool configuration. Unfortunately, the anti-ship gun cannot be stored anywhere despite these things on both sides looking like pegs. It would have been awesome if those could also store on the backpack. And as for this thing, it uh, doesn't store anywhere either. You can store the ammo clip, however. So with our Zaku ready to go to war, let's have a look at the customization options that we're getting. As the manual tells us, we do of course have the ability to turn it into either Slender's unit, as it is right now, or Denim's unit. The difference being the right shoulder, or left one as we're looking at it. For Slender's unit, we of course get the shield, and then for Denim's unit, we get just the regular square shoulder with a slightly different design. We have these two holes instead of the line on there, and this cage that goes over it for extra protection. And this is where you would put um, the construction markings on. However, we also get the ability to turn it into a regular Zaku. The diff oh, uh, excuse me, this part here. Uh, the ability to turn it into a regular Zaku. The difference being, well, there simply isn't an extra hole there for the peg to go in and you just have the regular uh, square shoulder. However, that is still not everything because it's of course a remold of the Zaku 2, so we still get a few usable Zaku 2 parts. You want black kneecaps? You get black kneecaps. You want black elbow protectors? You get black elbow protectors. You want slightly more detailed thrusters? You get slightly more detailed thrusters. You want a Zaku 2 torso? A kinda. So the thing about it is, you can use the Zaku 2 torso if you put this thing on, which you can do. However, then because of the way uh, these here are designed, you would have a hole where those vent-like things are. But if you don't mind the holes there, you can use a Zaku 2 chest. Then we also get this piece for the neck. And finally, to help him with more intricate action poses, we also get a connector for an action base number two which feels surprisingly a lot more solid than I was expecting from, you know, these style of connectors. As always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? Absolutely. For 1,700 yen, this bundle of joy can be all yours. Now, sure, 1,700 yen for a standard size machine is a bit on the higher side, but considering all the things we're getting, all of the accessories, so in general, all of the play value you're getting with this machine, I would say it is very much worth it. And also, with all the detailing, this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. Combine that with the articulation, and you can put this thing in some very badass poses. On top of that, when we look at some of the other model kits from the Gundam The Origin line, uh, for example, the Shard Zaku 2, which is the same price, but comes with less accessories and less weapons. You know, the Zaku one here becomes a much better deal when you think about it. So it kind of stays true to the concept of the original Zaku one from the Hydro Triple Century line, where that thing in its respective line was also a great money value, which this thing absolutely keeps looking at the other molecules from the line. So really, this Zaku one, just as with the old one, is an absolute must have kit. And because I mentioned the original Zaku one, I of course have to do a comparison between the two. And I know what some of you are already thinking. Man, the origin version is newer, much newer. It's of course going to completely obliterate the older one, making so that there is no more reason to get it. But well, I have some good news for you in this comparison. Both are still equally awesome and equally good to get. Yes, the original Zaku one might not be as detailed or as articulated, but in both fronts it's still very much up to date, especially the articulation. The Zaku one had phenomenal articulation for the day, which still holds up very well today. And well, as far as detailing goes, it is just very anime accurate, much cleaner than uh, the newer one, so if that's what you're going for, this thing is going to be fantastic. On top of that, 1000 yen only with a lot of accessories, and you can even say that it's kind of comparable 
to this guy right over here because yes, sure, he has a shoulder shield, but this guy also has a shield that can be held in his hand, which is not something you can do with the Origin version. Very sadly, that would have been awesome. Another thing this Zaku has going for it that the new Origin version does not have is a Commander Antenna. I didn't forget about it. It doesn't come with one. And really, if you ask me, a Zaku should always, always come with a Commander Antenna. But you know, I'll make an exception for this one because it's simply so amazing. So, the reasons to get this thing right here is, well, pretty much it's better in every single way. Uh, slightly better articulation, slightly better weapons, newer, it's awesome. But still, 1700 yen versus 1000 yen, eh, they're still both very much worth getting. So for size comparisons, first of all, here is next to two other Zaku ones, the Black Tristar version and the Zaku one Sniper, which also comes with a nice big gun. Then here is next to two Zaku 2s, we have the Zaku 2 F2 from 0083 and the Zaku 2 Commander type from the 08th MS team, which is also very nicely detailed and one of the more detailed Zaku 2s out there. And finally, here is next to the standard size Jim Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And that's all for this review, and see you guys next time.